When I first got my Leica M11, I did what most of us did. I ignored the instructions manual and went on the internet, YouTube and Leica forums to see how people set up their cameras. So I decided to publish a video showing how I set up mine to pay it forward. Now these settings that I'm about to show you are the settings that I use for street photography. I have an entirely different setup for my studio work, which I will probably show in a later video. Let's kick it off with ISO. I use auto ISO on this camera, but I kept it off at 6,400. In order to set that, you go to the menu, you click your menu button twice, go to the second page, go to maximum ISO, and change it to 6,400. The reason why I use auto ISO is because when doing street photography, lighting conditions change really, really quickly. So you want to get rid of a lot of variables. Now I know it's not entirely manual, but yeah, I like to use technology that I've already paid for. Below that setting is the minimum shutter speed setting. I set mine at one over four times focal length when I'm using auto shutter speed. What this means is that you're allowing the camera to set the minimum shutter speed to four times the focal length of the lens attached to it, whether you set it manually or it gets detected automatically by the camera. The camera will lower its shutter speed up to four times the focal length before increasing the ISO. So the result is that you use a lower ISO thereby having less noise. As you can see, I'm basically running the camera in aperture priority mode. I often shoot at f5.6 or f8 in daytime, in bright conditions, often lowering it down to f2, f2.8, or even switching it out to my 50 millimeter f1.2 and shooting it wide open at night. There will be people telling you that, no, you're not a photographer unless you shoot completely in manual. I think it's bullshit, don't listen to them. But let's move on to using the screen. I turned my focus peaking off, strangely enough, because I found it distracting. It turned into a game of, let's have the most red in the screen. And it removed my attention from more important things like composition, angles, whether the, uh, whether the photographs are straight or not. So yeah, I decided to turn it off. Now Robbie, how do you know that your image is focused? I just go by feel. If it looks right, I'll just take a shot. That's it. Now to set your focus, we can go to page four of the menu, click on capture resistance, and there you can turn it on or off, customize the color and change the sensitivity. The metering mode that I'm using is highlight weighted metering. The reason why I'm doing so is that in digital photography, it's more important to protect the highlights. It's easier to click the highlights compared to analog photography. So, I'll just set it to highlight metering, let the camera meter for the highlights, and then lift the shadows in post. Now let's talk about some of the buttons on the camera, mainly the top little button over here and the dial behind the shutter button. One of my favorite things about this camera is the way you customize the buttons, right? The only two buttons that you can customize are the top button and the button at the dial. If you long press a button, it will go into a menu allowing you to quickly customize that button. This is such a nice way to customize the buttons without needing you to dive into the menu. Maybe you should try that, Sony. The top button here, I have set to selecting my film style. I normally shoot in high contrast black and white, strangely enough, because I seldom post black and white photographs. The reason why I'm using black and white is that it allows me to see the luminance of the image better than color. So yeah, it just shows me which parts are bright, which parts are dark without introducing color as a distraction. I use focus magnification a lot more than exposure compensation, which I have assigned to the button on the dial here. Again, all you have to do is to long press the button and then it will take you to a menu where you can select what that button does. I typically only use daylight white balance or tungsten white balance. Yeah, I got that from film, so I'm just giving that a go. Then sometimes when I'm inside or if the lighting conditions is tricky, I switch to auto white balance. The problem with Leica M11's auto white balance is that it has a magenta tint to it. So the way I compensate for that is I bring it to Lightroom and lower down the tint towards green by about 12 points. So it's normally plus 26 if I'm not mistaken. I lower it down to about plus 14 or plus 12. So in my previous video, which is about a four month review of this camera, I have told you guys that it has a triple resolution and I use 36 megapixels. Pixels. That includes commercial work as well. 36 megapixels is enough. I save a lot of space. 18 megapixels 
it's probably enough but then it, my mind just doesn't allow me to shoot in that resolution in theory you get better dynamic range but to be honest it's not really obvious i can't see the difference so yeah i don't know the drive mode i keep it on single i don't think i've ever changed that finally let's talk about some of the accessories that i use i use a thumb rest which slides into the hot shoe of the camera I use a shutter button from Komaru, a red one. I want to get the Damascus one, but I can't find it anywhere. Or even the black paint one. I want to buy quite a few of them, actually. And a braided leather strap from Barton 1972. I want a black one, but we'll see. They're expensive. Right, so basically, that's about it. That's how I set up my M11. These settings will also apply to the M11P which is basically the same camera apart from an upgraded screen and the artist credential thing. Right, so hit that subscribe button if you found this video helpful and comment on some settings that you use that are normally not seen or even some questions about probably some things that I missed in this video. See you in the next one.